Right, so we're back again with the FieldTech signal generator. This time we're going to be looking at isolating the USB interface. And you'll notice since the last video, I've also added a bit of cooling. So I've added a blower fan with some ducting which are made from uh, acrylic and attached it to the transformers just to vent some of the warm air um, and uh, kind of the heat from the transformers and the heat sink out of the case. And at the back there's a corresponding hole which I um, filed out from the uh, top cover. This uh, added a bit of additional load. It's a 12 volt fan, but I've got it running from the 5 volt rail. Uh, but it added some load, which meant the calculations for the capacitor values were no longer valid. So um, I desoldered the uh, previous capacitors, the 1000 mic capacitors, and put a couple of uh, 22,000 mic capacitors in there. Um, and that 5 volt rail is nice and happy. So looking at the USB isolation, uh, we have the USB to serial converter chip, which was previously uh, plugged into the back here. And the issue is basically that uh, once you plug in your PC, if it's mains powered, um, there's a good chance that uh, if you are using a proper earthed socket, um, it will then bring all of the circuitry here down to uh, mains earth potential. So I do want this floating. Um, if you take the TTI arbitrary signal generator, which I have, Obviously that is uh, properly tied to ground, all the BNCs are tied to ground. But, um, so I do want this one to stay floating. Um, I could see applications where it might be quite useful to have this uh, floating at a higher voltage rail than uh, uh, reference to mains earth. So what we're going to do is have a look here at the way that this uh, USB to serial converter works and how it interfaces with this board and then see if this uh, solution which I've identified is going to work. So. Uh, we've got a generic uh, Chinese USB to serial converter on the back of this PCB and uh, it looks like these are all standard uh, TTR level signals so um, the chip itself is powered from the 5 volt uh, input from the USB um, connector at the back here and although there's the uh, four pins connected on the PCB so we've got labelled here TXD, RXD, ground and 5 volts there's only um, three of the connections linked to the main PCB because obviously uh, the PCB is already powered so you don't need the 5 volt rail. However the fact that that's present on this PCB is quite handy because um, the solution that I've identified is um, one of these NVE IL600 series uh, isolators and the one that we're specifically looking at is the IL612. So you'll see we've got some uh, galvanic isolation here and basically we've got the input uh, which is then isolated and then we've got the output here and we've got also uh, the reverse direction here. So obviously our transmit on the uh, USB to serial converter can go into here and then this side goes out to our front panel PCB and then the reverse. And there's just a, a power supply rail for each side. So it's completely isolated, there's uh, basically four pins on each side of this device. Uh, two for power, ground and um, 5 or 3.3 volts, and then these two signals, and then another uh, voltage rail for um, this side of it. So we've got our 5 volts ground and uh, receive and transmit, and we also have a corresponding um, transmit, receive, ground and 5 volts on this side. I will have to make up a new cable, but it looks like literally we can just use one of these parts uh, just with a few additional components and we'll be able to um, isolate the USB interface. So these isolator chips are really quite nice devices. I've used them before on a previous project and the one that we're looking at today is the part with the suffix minus two in the PDIP package and that gives us about 300 volts RMS isolation between each side of the chip. So here we have the one that we're looking at, the IL612 and you can see here we've got ground, out and the supply rail and in on one side and then this side is completely isolated and needs a separate ground and power supply on this side so we'll be able to power this side from the USB to serial chip and we'll be able to power this side from the signal generator itself. And you really don't need much else on the PCB so other than the standard kind of decoupling capacitors and that kind of thing on the supply rails all you need is a current limiting resistor in series with the uh, coil here so basically you can interface this with any voltage um, piece of electronics that you want um, and you just limit the current through the coil with a series resistor and you also have a capacitor if you want in parallel with that resistor uh, just to improve the rise times. Obviously you're limited on the uh, output of these buffers to whatever supply rail you feed into the chips 
um, and that's basically either three volts or five volts. So I've cut a little piece of board, it's slightly bigger than we need actually, uh, with a hole in it which is going to be uh, screwed into this post at the bottom here. And we're just going to have the 8-pin package soldered onto this uh, piece of Vero board uh, with the additional support components and a couple of headers. And that's really all we need, so we just need to uh, put a couple of headers so we can plug this in here and plug the other one into the uh, converter board just here. And that's basically the modification done. So I'll start soldering up the components. I'll also quickly uh, sketch up a schematic of what I've implemented on here so you can copy that yourself. Um, and then I'll join you once I've soldered this all up. Right, so here we have the circuit that I've implemented. So we've got the isolation chip in the middle here. We've got a four pin header on each side. We've got some power supply decoupling. So we've got one 10 mic and one 100 nanofad capacitor on each side, just on the five volt rail. Remember, um, there's two separate supply rails for this chip, so you do need decoupling on both VDD pins. Um, and then the RX lines just go straight through, so the output from the buffer in here can be interfaced directly with the TTL logic, which the signal generator is using. And then on the input to the isolation chip, we've got this network here of the current limiting resistor and the capacitor to improve the uh, the slew rate effectively. So the values that we've chosen here are 820 ohms and 22 picofad for each of these and that calculation is uh, explained in the data sheet but they actually give the 820 ohm uh, for 5 volt logic levels. So here we have the prototype um, board that I've quickly soldered up. Um, it didn't work out quite as well as I'd hoped. I had pre-cut the board um, but it turned out the uh, you know, the aspect ratio of the board and everything wasn't quite what I'd anticipated. Um, and I cut this out in advance at work because um, the PCB shears are nice and quick for cutting this type of board. But you can see here we've got a, an isolation strip um, running down the centre of the, um, the IC. And I've also done one on the bottom side. And a quick tip is if you've got a kind of reasonable soldering iron that has uh, reasonable heat output, um, you can just lift these pads, so just hold the soldering iron and just give it a little scrape and the pads come up, the glue melts, um, and um, you know it's nice and easy to do. And what I did here was I just ran the scalpel, um, two lines, and then just lifted this entire section with the soldering iron. So I just started at the bottom and just uh, ran it along and it lifted it up nice and quickly. So um, we've got the, the chip in the middle here. You can see we've got the power supply decoupling capacitors and the uh, 820 ohm resistors. And then on the other side, uh, we've got the, uh, the little 22 picofarad capacitor and 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor. Uh, and then I've just got some uh, Molex KK uh, four pin headers to go to the front panel and the USB uh, converter board. Um, the layout is reversed um, compared to the diagram. I decided to have the uh, USB converter um, chip coming on this side uh, just because of how it worked in the case. Um, so I'll just put the chip in here um, and then I'll screw this into the um, chassis and connect these up. I'll give it one final check that I've um, wired this all up correctly um, and then we'll see if it works. Right, so here we have the board in place. So we've got the little flying lead to the USB converter at the back here. And then we've got the board obviously with the chip in here. And then the flying lead going to the uh, front panel connector for the UART. So um, I'm going to give this a go in a minute. We'll just um, have a look at any other modifications which uh, might be of interest to people. So one thing that got mentioned on the EV blog was the, um, the clock for this. So uh, there is a discussion potentially about uh, feeding in a 10 megahertz external reference. Uh, you'll notice on the board the only crystal here is this 24 megahertz crystal. Um, or it might be an oscillator, I'm not sure. So I think if we were to try and implement a 10 megahertz external um, interface, what we'd have to do is uh, put a little PLL chip on a, another board and feed it in directly to here to give us the 10 megahertz, uh, to give us the 24 megahertz from the uh, 10 megahertz clock. So uh, that may be something uh, which might be an interesting uh, little addition in the future. We'll see uh, whether I've got time or not for that. And then the other thing that we could do is you can see all of the resistors here which are creating the um, R2R ladder for um, creating the DAC. So there's a whole bunch of them here, um, a whole bunch down here, and a couple more um, around these multiplexers. So 
what you could do is you could hand pick um, so there's only two resistor values it's an R2R ladder so basically um, one resistor is twice the value of the other and what you could do is buy a uh, I don't know 100 resistors or something like that these are 0603s uh, and measure the value of each one and basically bin them so that they're all matching uh, resistances and that would get rid of the uh, little glitch uh, that we saw at the zero crossing point and halfway up on the sinusoidal waveform so uh, that is something which you could do if you really wanted to uh, spend a bit of time making this even better. And there was also a question on the VBlog forum about just why uh, we're bothering modifying it all. Um, and really it's uh, a bit of curiosity really to see if we can make it any better. It's quite a cheap device um, and you know there's nothing to lose really by modifying it. You're only making it better. Uh, it depends how much you value your time obviously. If it's for professional use you just buy the... Uh, the proper tools but uh, for hobbyists it's a good way of learning um, and you know tinkering around with things really if that's uh, your hobby. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll put this all back together I haven't actually connected the uh, two back panel connectors back up to here so I'll do that um, and then we'll have a quick look to see if it's recognized by the software we'll have a quick look at the software and see if we can create some uh, arbitrary waveforms um, and then I think that's about all we're going to do for the signal generator. And just one other modification which I forgot about is to do with these output op amps. So we've got uh, one dual op amp here, an 8 pin dual op amp, which is buffering the output from our two R2R ladders. And then that's feeding these two power op amps which are underneath this heatsink. Unfortunately, uh, the screws on the other side, so I can't quickly uh, take this off. But there's two um, op amps behind here which are driving the output. So um, what we saw at close to 24 megahertz on the sine wave was we were seeing the amplitude starting to decrease. And there was a question about the Rigol, um, but it's got the uh, bandwidth upgrade, so uh, it's pretty sure it's not that. And also, if you go to my website, I've also included some screenshots there, and that's taken with a uh, much higher bandwidth uh, Agilent oscilloscope. Um, so almost certainly these op amps or the filter around it is limiting... Uh, the bandwidth on the output here so perhaps if this was uh, replaced for some faster op amps and there's probably a, uh, a filter on the um, feedback path on these op amps if you change that then uh, we'll get slightly better outputs from this um, signal generator. Right so we've got this plugged into the main so we'll turn this on and see if it's still working. Yeah that seems to be uh, fine We've got a bit of airflow at the back from the uh, little fan and we can also plug in the USB connector now and I can see on the PC screen that that's been picked up as a CH340 USB to serial converter. Um, so I'll just install the software um, and then we'll have a look at the software to see how, uh, well first of all whether it detects the device through the uh, interface um, and then we'll have a look at using it to create some arbitrary waveforms. Right, so I've just installed the software. Uh, in Device Manager, um, you can see here the USB serial converter is COM4, and also in the background we've got Rigol Ultrascope, so that's capturing the waveform over the LAN. Uh, from what I remember, this is slightly slow, so uh, we might not see updates immediately on the uh, Ultrascope software. Um, but let's connect to uh, COM4. And yet you can see that's found um, the um, signal generator. It's detected that at the bottom. Uh, we'll just turn off channel 2 on the signal generator. I've only got channel 1 connected. And so this is the control window. This is the one that boots up when you uh, start the software. Um, and we've got a slider at the bottom here. So I guess we can, uh, yeah, we can twiddle that and change the frequency. Can we also type in numbers? Yeah, you can type in numbers and actually you can see on the front panel as soon as I type a digit it immediately updates so that's uh, quite nice, that's nice and fast. Um, we can change the amplitude, uh, so we'll change that to 1 volt, does that work? Yeah, that seems to be uh, working fine, so no problems there. We've got the offset here and then we've got the various waveforms again and the duty cycle so uh, we can change this to a square wave and we can change the duty cycle here and you've got a little uh, graph here which shows what the waveform should look like 
Um, so that's all fairly straightforward, that all seems to make sense. Um, then at the bottom here we've got the uh, frequency sweep, so we explored that in the first video, that seems fairly self-explanatory again. We've got the start and the end frequency and the amount of time to do that sweep, as well as the various types. Um, obviously we've got channel 2 duplicated here. Um, I don't see how you turn the output on and off on here. I just use the uh, front panel switch here, but I don't see any way of disabling channel 1 or channel 2. Um, I must be missing that. Uh, and then we've got the uh, frequency measurement input here, so this will tell you uh, what the frequency is on the BNC from the front panel or the counter. Um, so that all seems to make sense, that's nice and straightforward. It's obviously uh, not particularly uh, a beautiful looking piece of software. The Rygos software looks really nice in comparison. Um, so let's have a look at the arbitrary waveform functions. Right, so if we go to the waveform window here, I think this is where we can uh, literally just draw the waveform that we want to produce. So this is just kind of freehand drawing. So let's, uh, let's create a waveform. There we go. So we should just be able to send this to the signal generator. So I'll click this button here. And you can see it's uploading that to the signal generator. And it's not outputting that at the moment. Um, memory area, so we've got first ROM here. So I think if we uh, go to one of the memories here, arbitrary wave one, I guess that would be the one that we've just sent. Yeah, and there we go. So that's the waveform uh, that we just drew. So uh, that seems fairly self-explanatory. I guess we can change the frequency here as well. Yep, so that seems to work fine. Um, so I guess full scale on here is, um, you know, the amplitude here. So if we draw something less than that, obviously it's scaled down. Um, I'm not sure quite how useful being able to draw the waveform is. I guess it's just a nice quick way of uh, getting something out on there. Um, but in the text window section here, it looks like you can um, set up a, uh, a comma separated variable list of values and um, just send that to the signal generator. So I'll just create a, uh, an Excel sheet with a waveform uh, and see if we can populate this and send it to the signal generator. Right, so I just had a quick look through the help. So the software user's guide on this uh, piece of software is actually reasonably helpful. Uh, and what it's doing is ex it's expecting 2048 data points to fill the uh, memory on the signal generator. So um, the values are 12-bit values where zero is uh, the minimum voltage and 4096 is the maximum. So I can just paste that um, set of numbers into the uh, window here and then you click view and that displays what the waveform is going to look like and obviously you can either use decimal or hex and then you can just click send data and that uploads it to the signal generator and we'll see if the output gets changed yeah and there we go so uh, that's fairly straightforward um, basically uh, Excel's your friend here just to create whatever waveform you're after or obviously you can record some data points somewhere or create it in MATLAB and simply just copy and paste it into the text window. So that all seems fairly straightforward. Um, I don't really see any uh, issues with this, it seems fairly self-explanatory. Um, the only thing that I can't find is how to turn the outputs on and off. Um, you've got four memory areas here to save your arbitrary waveforms into um, and it looks like there's a few extra functions here. But um, yeah, that seems uh, relatively straightforward. So I think this is the last video that I'm going to do on the signal generator. Uh, obviously if you have further questions then I'll either add them to the website or uh, if it's something that's really interesting we'll revisit the, um, the signal generator and do another video on that. 
So I hope you found this video interesting and useful if you have decided to purchase this signal generator or if you're uh, thinking about it. Uh, I will put the link again in the description down below. Uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.